Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. The hour has come for us to start our Bible study on tonight, and we're going to do part two of the principles of spiritual growth. Before we touch any portions of that, we're going to have a word of prayer, followed by scriptures for every day, then the reading of the seven works of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this opportunity as we submit ourselves unto you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Lord God, we just ask you right now that you would enter in, Lord God, by the Holy Spirit, that we may decrease and that you may increase. We ask right now that the Holy Spirit will open up unto us a revelation of your word. Give us understanding that we may apply thy word to thy life and that we may grow spiritually. In Jesus' name, amen. Scriptures for every day, wisdom and knowledge belongs to you. Colossians 1, 9 through 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord into all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 17 through verse 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Isaiah 11 and 2, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Be filled with God's fullness. Ephesians three seventeen through 19. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Colossians, the second chapter, verse 8 through verse 10. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead body, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Acts 1 and 8, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Expect the move of God suddenly. Romans the 8th chapter, verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal, natural earthly bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Please note this is talking about your body that you have now, not the one you're going to receive one day in heaven. Allow the Lord to impart his life into you by placing faith in his word and begin to praise him for this promise. Amen. The seven works of grace, your bill of rights in Christ. Repentance, atonement, sorrow. Conversion, transform, changed. Justification, validation, legalization. Sanctification, consecration, purification. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, beginning. Redemption, liberation, deliverance, freedom. Perfection, excellence, and faultlessness. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We honor Apostle Allen and Pastor Allen. Praise the Lord. We're going to pick up where we left off on last week with the principles of spiritual growth. We did cover numbers one through four. And I'll just do a quick recap. I'll read the answer in. Number one is God is ultimately responsible for all spiritual growth. Number two, effort, diligence, and discipline are absolutely necessary for growth. Number three, 
spiritual growth potential may not be easy to see at first. And number four, spiritual growth depends on an intimate relationship with Christ. So we are on number five tonight. Spiritual growth is primarily and how, how does spiritual growth work? Is it from the outside in or the inside out? From the inside out. Right, and that's the answer. Spiritual growth is primarily an inside out process. It's what's going on in the heart of us that comes out. And that's in all of us. What's in the heart of a man, it will be expressed through his words and through his actions. Jesus clearly said to us, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you really love me, then you will begin to do what I ask you to do. We tell our, uh, I, I, it's the same thing in relationships, especially with marriages or growing to marriage. Honor me. That's a part of the vows. Honoring your spouse. Submitting one to another. Not everybody is ready for that. You know, the submission part. Being faithful. The communication. Well, oftentimes in the Old Testament, God compared, and even in the New Testament, Jesus compared, we're the bride. And we have to prepare ourselves. So as a bride, if you want to be a bride, then there's some things. And even if you want to be a groom, it's a process that you have to go through. Discipline. We talked about discipline last week. Uh, you know, spending, being committed to one person. It's the same thing when it comes to our spiritual life. We cannot be, uh, we can't be committed into, to, we can't serve God and mammon. We just can't. Either we're going to commit ourselves wholeheartedly to God so that we can get the full benefit of what he has for us, or we're going to serve mammon, Satan. So we have to find out where we are and where our alliance is. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, and we're going to start at the fourth verse. Spiritual growth is primarily an inside-out thing. So while you're looking for that, I'll, I'll go ahead and continue and say, we can dress up the outside all we want. But if our heart isn't right, it profits us nothing. You can be beautiful, decked down in a suit, a tie, dress. Listen, you can put on all of that attire. But when, what, when you open that mouth, with what come out of that mouth, to God be the glory. <laughs> is it righteous? Is it holy? Is it of the fruit of the spirit? Is it love or is it? So what's coming out of the mouth? And so somebody might look at the appearance of a person. That's why they say we can't judge a book by its cover. We talked about that last week when Samuel went to uh, anoint David. Don't look at the outer appearance. Because God looks at the heart of a man. Over in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, beginning at the fourth verse, it says, Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Verse six says, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So, that's where the word of God needs to be, in our hearts. If we really want to carry the word, it has to be in our heart. We can walk around and quote all the scripture we want. But if we're not obedient to it, it profits us nothing. We're, listen, we can hear the word, but if we're not doing it, it profits us nothing. We just hearing and hearing and hearing, but we're not doing what God says because it hasn't taken root in our heart. And when it's really in our heart, we will seek to please God. Because the Holy Spirit is right there. He's going to be right there to bring the word of God back to our remembrance. He's going to be right there to tell us, you know, that something that we did was out of order. It didn't line up with the word of God. 
I, I know for myself, I am always asking God, am I in the right place with you? Am I where I'm supposed to be? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, uh, even after ministering or anything like that, I say, did I do what I was supposed to do? Did I give what you wanted me to give? Because I want to do what's pleasing in his sight. It's in my heart to please him. When we really have the word of God embedded in our heart, we'll begin to walk up right in and seek his face to want to do the things that it don't even have to please me. I'm not worried about pleasing this flesh. I want to please God. I'm not worried about pleasing or making anybody else happy because we'll never make a person happy. Even if we take an account of our own selves. Listen, this one thing right here might excite me because I did it for the first time. Get ready to do it again. And guess what? The enthusiasm is gone. But every time we have an encounter with the word of God, it rejuvenates us. See, the word of God does something in our hearts. And that's why it's the inside out thing. Because that word is doing something on the inside. It's not like our clothes, if we have it on on the outside. Listen, we can change those clothes. So imagine that if it was only in our appearance. Well, what if today I don't decide I don't want to dress holy? That ain't got nothing to do with my salvation. That's why I got to be on in the inside. So if it was based off of what we had on, what if somebody ain't got no holy church clothes and what are holy church clothes what is that mm -mm, ain't no uh, uh even when it comes to our hair our makeup we put so such an emphasis and i'm so glad we've come such a long way on the outer is what's going on in the inside and as it develops on the inside guess what the holy spirit will change and shift you in. And when you begin to say, um, how do I take care of this vessel? I belong to God. I'm a bride. I'm married to Christ. So how am I supposed to care of myself as a wife? I'm married to Christ. It's on the inside out. Let's take a look at Mark. Because uh, we're going to go a little further within Deuteronomy as we go to number six and seven so i just want to take a peek at mark the fourth chapter really quick we'll come back to deuteronomy six so mark that in your bible put your marker there because we will be back over in mark the fourth chapter starting at the first verse looking at a couple of parables. What's going on in the inside? What's being sown? It says, and he, be, he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, hearken, Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and yet yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, see, when we don't have an understanding of what we read, Ask the Holy Spirit to give you a revelation of what you're reading. It's actually good to pray that prayer before you start reading the word. First of all, I believe the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us on an area in the word that we need to read and study. 
because it is what we need at that particular time. Everything we need to help us get through day-to-day -day trials and tribulations, growing into spiritual maturity, it's all in the word of God. And if we would just pull on the Holy Spirit and say, lead me in the word to what I need concerning this. It goes on to say, they that were about him with the 12 asked him of the parable. And he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. That's because they have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. They have found themselves to be connected to the vine. We've been talking about being connected to the vine for the past couple of weeks. Only those who are connected to the vine will the Holy Spirit give a revelation of God's word. It's for the believer. Now it takes those individuals who minister and teach to take their time when you have an unbeliever who have questions to take their time and break down the word of God to give them an understanding because God will never allow anybody to teach in an audience. If they teach in above the people head, then guess what? I, I will say this. They didn't consult God. It does us no good to teach above the audience's head. They can't comprehend it at all even the believer. And then you can't teach under them either. We have to ask, what do you want to say to your people? This is when you got the word in your heart, embedded in your heart. This is when it is in your heart deeply and you are concerned about what you give God's people. I want to give them the word. So he's saying, that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them and he said unto them know ye not this parable and how then will you know all parables why you don't know this mm-hmm thank god for the holy spirit sometimes we do come across a word and listen we don't have clarity that's where the holy spirit comes in to give us a revelation Verse 14 says, the sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay, well, as soon as the word go out, there is the enemy. As a matter of fact, he will come with thoughts of distractions when the word is going forth. Because he don't even want you to hear it. He don't even want you to hear it. So while the word is going forth, all kind of distractions, thoughts come up, uh, uh, phone ring, oh, you know, you're getting ready to go into prayer, somebody at the door, oh, I just stopped by. You know what I find is so funny? That I am, I'm in the word or in prayer and my phone will ring and somebody will say, and I don't answer and then when I call back later, they'll say, oh, the Lord told me to call you. I had a word for you. Not when, not when he led me to go in prayer. No, he didn't. He knew I was in prayer. You might have was supposed to call me earlier. <laughs> but uh, you ain't answering your phone. I had a word for you to look at that time. Because I was, I was in prayer. I was communing with God. And he's not going to interrupt that. I know he not. Uh-uh. Now, once again, you might have supposed to have called me before. You, This might be the time you called me. and You might have a word for me now to confirm what I was praying about or what he had said to me or what he wanted to reveal to me. But at that precise time, mm -hmm. so I've had that experience and I'd be like, oh, okay, okay. You know, I have been in my word, studying, reading the word of God. Phone ain't wrong all day long. Uh-huh. And guess what? Time to pray. Time to read. Yep. I've even experienced getting so sleepy. As soon as I pick up my word and start reading, all of a sudden, I am sleepy as I don't know what. I want not sleep before I sat down to read. Yep. And then listen, here's some transparency. So, and this was a couple of years ago. It happened the first time. 
And listen, I nodded off to God be the glory. Okay? Another occasion. So sleepy. I nodded off again. I went to sleep. Third time. I said, wait a minute. Because when I gave in to nodding off a few minutes later, you know what? After I gave in and not reading the word, I was no longer sleepy. And I said, okay, I recognize you as a distraction. So when that fourth time came around and it wasn't in succession, it just happened like spaced out, but I recognized it. So the fourth time, guess what? Oh girl, you finna push through and read this word. You're gonna push through. You can, you, listen, you can take a nap later, but you're gonna push through and read this word. So that's what the enemy does. He comes immediately. Verse 16 says, and these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. So we happy, we rejoicing, we heard the word. Oh, that was a good word, good word, good word. What they talked about, what they preached about. I don't know, but it sure enough sounded good. Well, what scripture they came from? I don't know, it was so many of them. I ain't heard nothing. I ain't heard a thing. Hallelujah and thank you and before the word can even execute out the person mouth. Because it sound good. We're looking for a sound good, a feel good. But we need the word of God embedded in our lives for, for a true transformation. Verse 17 says, and, and have no root in themselves, and so endure for but but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Now, if I'm really going to take in the word, I need the word to do what, it's gonna, what it says it's going to do. Jesus said, you're cleansed by the word, okay? So I want to be cleansed. How else am I going to be cleansed? Because washing the physical ain't going to get it. Uh-uh, no. You can't wash lying spirit off of you. <laughs> no, uh-uh. You can't get a fresh haircut and say, ooh, I'm, I'm transformed, my mind being renewed. Uh-uh. No, it's what's going on. That word is in the heart. That is where the transformation is taking place. As we take in the word, our minds are being renewed. So immediately, how the word, okay, I'm offended by the word you were supposed to be because the word corrects us. Why? So that we, he, he already gave his only begotten son, I want to secure myself coming into the gate. I want to secure myself into heaven. So the word is supposed to make me feel uncomfortable. The word is supposed to make me check myself. Examine myself. Uh-huh. If it, listen, if it hit me, I may not say ouch out loud, but I'm cringing. I'm like, ooh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Lord, forgive me, you know. Inwardly praying, listen, I'm smiling, but in the inside, I'm saying, Lord, forgive me, because that, that, that was just, you just hit me. But not so offended that we turn and we walk away. Mm-hmm. That we run from the word. Uh-uh. Let that word do what it, it needs to do. Verse 18 says, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word and it become unfruitful. Verse 20, and these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit some 30 fold, some 60 and some in hundred. So what it, what am I doing? If I got it in my heart and it's transforming me and it's changing me, it's critiquing me, it's pruning me, it's doing what it's supposed to do because I have it in my heart. There's a scripture in the Old Testament that said, I, I kept your word in my heart so that I don't sin against you. Because whenever good is present, so is evil. Mm -hmm. 
But the Holy Spirit is there to say, uh-uh, don't do that. That's not pleasing the, in the eyesight of God. That's out of the will of God. And here's another thing. He can't bring nothing back to our remembrance that's not in the heart. You ain't read it. You haven't taken it in. So what are you going to bring back to your remembrance if you haven't spent any time in the word of God? Number six. Spiritual growth relates to every aspect of our lives. Not just some. Every aspect of our lives. There is no separation. Mm -mm. There is no such thing as you sweetest pie under the anointing and a rattlesnake when the anointing is not resting upon you. Uh uh. Sp spiritual growth relates to every area, every area of our lives. You know why that's so? Because God has given us gifts and talents, right? Yep. That needs to be discovered and developed for the use of the kingdom. So how am I, I can't separate his gift. It came from him. It's working and operating in me. So his gift is not only in operation among the fivefold ministry. Uh-uh. You got gifts and talents in you that's going to come and it's for your provision. So you can't separate God from that. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct what? Your paths. Every area of your life, your paths. So I can't separate. I can't do it over here. And over here, I'm something else. That's out of balance. That's, that's not on one accord. We want to be on one accord with God. But first, before I can be on one accord with you, I must be on one accord within me. God, let my mind, my body, my soul, my spiritual man, let it all be on one accord. I don't want to think one thing but something else in my heart. Can't do that. That's not on one accord. It covers every aspect of my life. And I'm all, we all have to be in that check and balance. Uh-huh. Check and balance you. We are so concerned with checking and balance somebody else. And, and as they say, raggedy than a mango seed. Seeking our own, we should be seeking our own soul salvation. I can't help you walk if I'm limping. Now, we may limp together, and we're going to get strong, and as I get strength, I can hold you up. But if I ain't trying to get strong and mature, and I ain't trying to help you get strong and mature, what are we doing? Mm -mm. So every, every aspect of my life, every area, every area, God, I want you in every area of my life. I don't want to exclude you from anything. I want you in my relationships. I want you in, in everything, in business. I don't want to exclude you from anything. I don't just want you to utilize me for ministry in the church. Uh -uh. I want you in every area of my life. I need to grow in every area of my life. Nothing is excluded. Nothing. Mm -mm. There is no separation. He is God of all. In every area of our life. So sometimes we try to separate him. I'm going to keep God over here and I'm going to do this over here. But you want him to bless that, but you won't invite him in it. So I need to invite him in every area of my life. I want to take the limits off of him. I don't want him to be limited in my life. Mm -mm. I don't want him to just give me wisdom and knowledge and understanding to do this. But over in business, I can't handle nothing. No, I need you over there. I need you. Why? Because your gifts and talents are in me. You gave me what you gave me for the kingdom of heaven. 
And if I'm going to use it the way you intended for me to use it, I need you in it. So spiritual growth relates to every area of our life. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 6. Picking up at the fifth verse. It says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Every aspect of my life. There is, there is no separation. Mm -mm. Every, every area. Every area. God, I know you told me to hold my peace. I'm, but when I get, I'm, I, I got something to say. I, I want to handle this part, God. No. <laughs> he can handle it all. He, he, he is God Almighty. There is none other besides him. Let him handle it. You ain't got to put your two cents in. Save your two cents. If you keep saving your two cents, soon enough you're going to have a dollar. And let that dollar multiply. Hold your peace. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to go out and, 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 and do all of it. No. Every area. It says here, let me read that again. And thou shalt love the Lord with thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all that might. That might is your total being. Your total being, love him. Let's go further. I want to go further in, in reading some more of this. And we're going to cover it. Let's go down to six. It says, in these words, which I command thee this day, shall it be where? Let it be in your heart. What God is saying, his commandments, let it be in your heart. Take it in. Take it in. That's what, it goes back to those vows. Take it in. Take it seriously. Now, if you don't want to take it seriously, the relationship seriously, why enter in it? Same thing with soul salvation, with your salvation with Christ. If you ain't going to take it seriously, why, why get in it? That's why it's not good to, to, to make these obnoxious, silly vows. God, if you do this, I'll do that. You know you ain't got no intention. Uh-huh. God, if you bless me with a wardrobe, I'll I, I be at the church. I, I need church clothes. I need church clothes. I need church clothes. Come on and come. Come on and come. Don't say I can't go because I don't have any church clothes. Put some clothes on. Be decent now. We, I don't want to see no cleavage in nobody rump. Come on in. Be decent. But come on in. Don't let the enemy fool you with I can't go because I, I don't dress like them. You know what? You never will. And don't try to. Let the Holy Spirit make and mold you on that. But come on. Come on to the house of the Lord. Let's get the word of God. Verse 7 says, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Uh-oh. So what are we teaching? What are we teaching? What's in our heart? Mm-hmm. Whatever comes out of your mouth, whatever you execute, whatever you demonstrate, it's because it's in your heart. So what is it that I want to give? I want to make heaven my home. So I got to be careful about what I teach my children. And it's not just my physical children, my spiritual children. Every, every, every aspect of our life, spiritual growth relates to every area. So I got to be careful what's going on in my heart. If it ain't right, get it right. Lord, help me in this area. I'm having a problem in this area. God knows I am. I'm going to give you a prime example. And I think it was last week I had my mom laughing that, um, and it was one of my children. I said, Lord Jesus, by the time they got on my nerves, I had to repent. Mm -hmm. I had to repent. But my repenting was, Lord, forgive me for being judgmental. Because what they are going through, guess what? I never experienced it. But just the mere fact of it got on my nerves. 
So I said, Lord, forgive me, but help me to be the parent that they need right now in this stage of their life. Help me with that. Because, see, I don't understand. And because I don't understand, it quickly got on my nerve. So help me so that I don't sin against you. Uh-huh. Because I can be held liable. And God knows I don't want to push anybody away. Uh-huh. So, Lord, help me. That's how I, listen, that's how I know some spiritual maturity going on up in here. Let me tell you, within me, I know it's happening. That he doing something in me, and I'm letting him do it. Because immediately the Holy Spirit was, you out of the will. <laughs> and it convicted me so, and I said, oh, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. I don't understand what they're going through, because I, I never went through that. So I don't understand. But what they need, Lord, give me the words to say. Give me the prayer to pray. Help me to understand God because I don't. A lot of times when we don't understand something, guess what? We judge it. We talk about it. But we don't even understand it. So I said, Lord Jesus, I know you're doing a good work in me and I'm going to let you do that work in me number seven says growth happens most naturally within a close social context I went down to number seven because we're still in the book of Deuteronomy the sixth chapter spiritual it says growth happens most naturally within a close social context context why is that so it goes back to helping one another growing under spiritual maturity verse 7 says and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up why because that's what's on my heart that's what's going on with me. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, you could get my attention all day long if you're talking about the word, prayer, the prophetic, purpose, goals and dreams. You listen, you have my attention. Yeah, you have my attention. Building a business, expanding, growth. You got my attention. You fall outside of that and start talking about some gossip. Guess what? Boom. You just lost me. I turned off. I ain't even listening. Mm -mm. I'm no longer interested. That's not what's in my heart. What's in my heart is what I allow to come out of my mouth. What has my interests. What I want to talk about. What I want to encourage somebody else about. So that's what we do, and that's what we're supposed to do. It says that when we rise up, when we lay down, that's what's in my heart. Now, if, if from morning to night, it's a bunch of discord and gossip and things that are not fruitful and not edifying, something is wrong. Something's wrong. But I have confessed with my mouth. But that's not what I'm releasing. So something wrong. Teach me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. Catch yourself. I'm saying to all of us, we have to catch ourselves. We have to pay attention to ourselves. Don't be like we just read over in Mark. Those different seeds. Don't let the enemy come and snatch what you just heard and you receive. Hide that word. Hide it. And another thing, when we get the word, go back during the week and, and, and read over that scripture uh, and, and 
we should be reading the word throughout the week. Give God some of your time. Some of it. If it ain't not but 30 minutes, if, if, if the amount of time that we doing all these other things, my favorite thing for a long time has been to play spider solitaire on my phone. I can play game after game after game after game after game after game after game. I can't give God some of that time to read some word. The game ain't going nowhere. It's on my phone. As a matter of fact, if I stop in the middle of a game and I go back to it 30 minutes later, guess what? Where I left off is still there. But that word, we need the word of God in our hearts daily. Verse 8 says, and thou shalt bind them up for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as fortlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Listen to verse 10. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. And houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells dig which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then beware. Come on now, beware. See, so there's a benefit for allowing God to be in every aspect of our life. There is a benefit of spiritual growth from the inside out. There is a benefit. It's not only that he given us correction, it's promises in the word. Now, God will give you an individual promise. He will give a corporate promise. He, and when I say corporate, that's, that's beyond two people. So it could be for the household, the husband and the wife. It could be to the ministry, to the organization, to the individual. God give you a promise. And guess what? An example of his promise that he gave you is also written and recorded in the word of God. He's giving you a promise that he's already given to somebody else. And the manifestation of that promise has been recorded in the word of God. There are more promises in the word of God that that are being fulfilled, but there are some promises that God has made you. He done made it to somebody else and it has been fulfilled. So if I don't know his promises, what I'm standing on, if I don't know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, I can hear you saying it. I might just think that you, you, you just out talking. That's, that's in the word. Now, what's not in the word, God ain't never said, uh, if you make one step, he'll make two. He ain't say that. He ain't say that. God, God ain't say that. Uh-uh. No. Man said that. Now, we can say you walk by faith. <laughs> but he ain't say, you made one step, God made two. Uh-uh. No, that's a song. That's a saying. Mm -mm. So what's in our heart? There is a reward for taking in the word of God. There is a reward for spiritual growth. A heavenly reward. Spiritual reward. Releasing unto you, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, uh, spiritual responsibility. He has to release unto us responsibility and authority before we can engage in certain areas. Spiritual warfare. You have to receive certain authority and responsibility in order to engage in certain areas of spiritual warfare. Enemy attack, level of attack. But if I ain't got his word, if I don't know what he said, then guess what? I don't know. But I got to take it in. So when the enemy comes in against me, said the enemy can come in like a flood, but he'll lift up a standard. Who will lift up the standard? This holy, the spirit. He'll lift, lift up a spirit. He'll lift up the standard. Why? Because he's going to bring the word back to your remembrance. He's going to tell you what to do. When the enemy has paid attention to our patterns, do you not know that there is an example in the word concerning that? In the Old Testament, 
when God tells the prophet to tell the king, change your pattern, the enemy knows what you're going to do and where you're going to go, change your pattern. So guess what? The enemy gets used to how we do things. He know, listen, he knows at the same time you're going to pray, how you're going to pray, and how long you're going to pray because he has studied you. So guess what he going to do? He going to come interrupt it. Soon as you say amen, he going to come and fight against you. He's going to do something to get you off of that time. If we pay, pray repetitiously, that's out of familiarity. But Holy Spirit, I don't know what to pray. Lead and guide me. I don't know what to say. If you don't tell me, if you don't show me, I don't know. I'm waiting on you. But the, but the enemy studies us. He watches us. But everything, that's why it's good to have the word of God in your heart. Everything we go through. God know we're going to face some trouble. He know that we're going to need somebody to call on. He said, listen, don't call on money. Don't call on social status. Don't call on your mama or your daddy, your sister, your brother, your friend, unless I tell you to go over there. And if I tell you to go over there, they're going to be expecting you because I've already sent the message to them by the Holy Spirit that you on the way. But if you call on me first in the day of trouble, I will answer you. So he's already giving it to us. But I got to get it in my heart. Until I get it in my heart, I'm going to keep on making the same mistake. I'm going to keep on dialing over here and dialing over there and dialing over there because I haven't gotten his word in my heart where he told me to call on him first. So I'll keep making the same mistakes. The enemy will keep coming and choking that word. He has snatched it from me because I have it gotten in my heart. But when I get it in my heart to God be the glory, a change will be made. My mind will be renewed. Listen, God, I don't have anybody to call. You may have a whole list of people to call, but God, I don't have anybody to call. I am calling on you. I am leaning and depending on you. You are my provider. You are are my source I'm coming to you first if you've already told somebody to release it then guess what I pray that they are obedient because the thing about it is we all have a choice do you not know that the same way you have a choice to be obedient so does the next person pray that they get it in their heart Pray that you get it in your heart. God, I want your word in my heart so that you can lead and guide me by the Holy Spirit. So that I, listen, I can fall back on your word. I can fall back on your promises. It's in my heart. It's in my heart to do right. It's in my heart. It's in my heart. That's where it has to be. In my heart to do right. Listen, if I pull this jacket off, guess what? The word is still in my heart. I still want to do the right thing. I still want to do it. It has nothing to do with standing behind this podium. It's obedience that has me here because I got the word of God in my heart. So before I stand behind this podium, after I stand, after I leave this podium, it's still in my heart to do what he says in the word. That's where it has to be. Deep down in the heart. It's not a surface thing. Uh-uh. It's not a surface thing. You can't take it off and, and put it back on. Mm -mm. If we're going to grow into spiritual maturity, let's get that word in the heart. Take it in, take it in, take it in. Little doses at a time. Digest a little bit at a time until you can digest a little bit more. Holy Spirit, give me a revelation of, of what I just digested. Help me to live what I just read. Help me to become one with what I just read. The more you take in the word, all you're doing is taking on Jesus, taking in more of Jesus because he is the word. He came down in the likeness of flesh. You're taking in Jesus. 
I want more of you, Jesus. How do I get more of Jesus? That's how you get some more. Mm -hmm. That's how you get it. More of Jesus. You want to be more like him? With love and kindness have I drawn thee? Taking in the word. You want to be led by the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is going to lead you to Jesus, which is the word of God. He ain't going to lead you astray. Number eight, significant growth often occurs within the context of what? <laughs> Frustration and suffering. Significant growth often occurs when, within the context. Listen, when you're frustrated, you don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You don't know what to do. God, I don't know what to do. Help me. I need some instructions. I need some directions. I need, listen, God, oh God, I, listen, I can't handle this. You said you'll put no more on me than I can bear. So you know what that really means? That you're going to help me. Lord, this is a heavy weight that you placed on me. Show me how to carry it. Don't, I, listen, I don't just want to carry it. I want to carry it well. I don't want to carry it with my bag knocking me over. I got stuff falling out my hand. No, show me how to carry the weight well. How do I learn how to carry the weight well? In the word, being led by the Holy Spirit. Suffering. Suffering. God, you said you supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. Uh-huh. You know what I have need of. This right here is, is, is true, and, and, and I, I pray that it's going to bless you because I it was a couple of weeks ago, and I, ca I caught a cold. I think we were all catching it. And I like natural stuff. So I wanted some pink grapefruit. I wanted some grapefruit. I wanted to wash them and boil them and make me a tea. We went to Walmart. They had absolutely none. We went over by Acme. They had some organic, I think they were what, four for five or something like that, 10 or something. They were expensive. One pink grapefruit cost me $3. I see it. I need it. No problem. Got the grapefruit, and I was talking to my mom, and I said, they're expensive here. I said, I need to find out how much they are in Florida, and I'm going to have to have Big James or somebody ship me some grapefruits, okay? Two days later, not quite two days, pastor went somewhere. Now I done told the Lord what I want, right? She went somewhere, and I was getting ready to show her something, and I was teasing her. I said, I want to show you something, but you can't ask for it. She had this box in her hand coming through the door, and she kind of pulled it around to the side. She said, and I got something for you, but you can't ask me for it. So we just going back and forth. Guess what was in that box? What I asked for the Lord, asked the Lord for those pink grapefruits. Not even two weeks later, I got another phone call. Sister Donna called me. Elder Ferguson, I got something for you. I said, what's that? I got some pink grapefruits for you. I said, come on, Lord. You're going to supply what I need to take care of this vessel because I'm asking you how to take care of me. And you say you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. And you will put people in line to do that for me. Just like you put me in line to do for others, you have no respect to person. None. So when I called my mom, I said, you never guess what I got. So she said, what? I said, I got me some pink grapefruit. She said, you just prayed. I said, I know I did. I told the Lord, this is what I want. He know what I like. I said, God, this is what I want. And he supplied it. He said he'll supply all of our needs. He said, make your request known. 
Now, I align my request, though, with the word of God, because I submitted myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is my reasonable service. God, I am your vessel, and I want you to tell me how to take care of your vessel on earth as it is in heaven. You show me how to take care of your vessel, because I don't know. Give me a plan. Show me what to do. And I ain't have to have nobody to ship me no grapefruits. Then she came with something else. Sister Dom, she came with something else. Everything that I like, I like those pomegranate juices. She said, Elder Ferguson, you like pomegranate juice? That's good for uh, antioxidants. I said, yes. She said, I got you. I got you a case of them. I said, Lord, I keep saying, supply what I need to take care of this vessel. And you are doing what I asked. I got your word in my heart. I'm praying for others that they may be healed. That's my desire. I'm interceding. I'm doing. And when I'm listening, and uh, and, and I I don't cross every T and dot every I. I don't. I'm not perfect. And that's why I said, Lord, if I didn't do what was pleasing in your sight, knowingly or unknowingly, forgive me. Because I want to remain humble and obedient and with a repentive heart. He told me to keep a repentive heart. I'm doing what the word says. But unless I get in the word, unless I begin to hide it in my heart, tuck it away, ponder over the word, go back, read the word, savor the word. It's good. It's good. Listen, it come in sweet. And when it go down and get a little bitter, that's the correction. But it becomes sweet again. It really does. Because it transforms our lives. Amen? So that's our two-week lesson for tonight. And there are more lessons. This is out of the book, Growing Under Spiritual Maturity. Uh, we're going to be in that book, pulling out different lessons. Uh, because we're all on a journey together no one is exempt no one is exempt we all have to grow in spiritual maturity because we're not all on the same level but just because we're not on the same level that don't mean I, I, that I don't want you to grow I want you to grow I want to grow I want us to grow together that's, that's what's being unified. That, that's, a, that's the thing about being unified. That's keeping the word of God in our heart, not being selfish. Not that I'm going to get a lesson and listen, hold it to myself and keep it to myself and, and peep over at somebody and say, well, they ain't got nothing to grow on. No, that's not what we're supposed to do. We just read it in Deuteronomy. said in your rising up and in your laying down, when you're sitting around, this is what you talk about. This is what you teach. This is what you do. Amen. Don't forget on next Wednesday, we are having virtual Bible study only. Yeah, next Wednesday, virtual Bible study only. Amen. Let us have prayer. Glory be to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day and this opportunity as we have come, Lord God. We thank you for your word as we are all pressing forward to the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus as we are striving and sitting at the table of Jesus Christ led by the Holy Spirit eating and digesting your word i thank you right now that lives are being changed minds are being transformed lord god we're being renewed and rejuvenated in the mighty name of jesus i thank you lord god that this word is going forth until the ends of the earth that it is reaching those that it needs to reach father god in the mighty name of jesus i thank you right now for healing and for deliverance lord god i thank you right now that through salvation we are made whole in christ jesus i speak a blessing upon your people lord god you know exactly where we are you know what we need you know what we don't need you know what we can handle and what we can't handle i thank you right now that you are pulling you are drawing us to come up 
oh God, digesting more, adding to our faith in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for traveling grace and mercy for those, Lord God, who have to travel back home, Lord God. I pray for those even in their home, Lord God, that you will begin to draw them out in the name of Jesus to come, Lord God, to go, Lord God, to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, drawing them, oh God, in this hour. I ask these things of the Father in Jesus' name, amen.